And one of the things I ask you to do, which actually has nothing to do with numerical PDs per se, but like is used a, a, a lot in numerical methods, is I was asking you to look at how uniform the temperature is, and I want to also minimize how much water you are using. So the amount of water you're using is an integration from, let's say, 0 to t. And by the way, if you want to compute the average amount of water per unit time, you would be dividing that by 1 over t times u of t dt. So if you have a function, either analytical or numerical, uh, you can you should also be computing the integral. So I want to I want to get a sense of how many people already know how to integrate numerically functions, arbitrary functions like that. It's like half of the class. So I, I'll I'll say a little bit on that. Um, the I would only teach one way of doing numerical integration for now. That is a, a trapezoidal rule. So if this is ut and this is t equal to 0, this is t equal to big T. If you use something like finite difference, you have you, dis, you can discretize the function at grid points. So 2 delta t, etc., up to t is equal to n times delta t. And you have a function like this, and the value of the function is known at these grid points. The trapezoidal rule is very simple. It is approximating the integral of the function, which is the area under this curve, by many small trapezoids. So basically, that means linking the every pair of grid points using a straight line. Okay, and count how much area is beneath this straight line and this straight line. So, for example, if you have u0 and u1 and u2 here, what is the area behind this trapezoid where this is 0 delta t, this is u0, u1? Yes? Uh, so uh, what is the Exactly. So that's how much area is under this curve. So how much area is under the summation of all these, uh, all these uh, uh, linear lines? What is the summation of all the areas? It's basically a summation over, you can pull delta t out. It's going to be a summation of i goes from 1 to n of ui minus 1 plus ui. So that's a very good approximation of this integral. And if you want, you can go back and do Taylor series analysis and convince yourself this is actually second order approximation. Yeah, uh, at least the second order approximation. It depends on how smooth the function is, right? So, so this is uh, this is uh, what you can use to do the projects. I don't think today I, I have time to go to iterative methods. So the rest of uh, 10 minutes, I will see if uh, uh, anybody wants to ask additional questions on the project. Uh, I want to clear up this one. Uh, yeah. Can we just focus on this function? So no, those functions are like periodic functions. Like I, I turn the water on, then I turn it off, and then I turn it back on. Right? Not like that at all. As a it's up to you. Okay. It's up to you. So even if you do piecewise continuous functions, it's also pretty easy to use this to integrate. If you, let's say, turn this off at this point and turn it on again, you can just focus on integrating this part of the solution, right? So there is, uh, there is nothing that prevents you to do piecewise continuous functions. And also, it also allows you to do non-uniform spacing in time. So for example, if you use ODE45 to integrate your ODE, OD45 is going to return you an array of time steps, uh, time points, right? And there is no guarantee it will return you a uniform array of time points. So instead of having a constant delta t, the modification would be non-constant 
delta t would be summation of i goes from 1 to n of delta t i u i plus 1 oh u i minus 1 plus u i over 2 so this would be a uh, same integral with non-uniform time steps.